you can have it all. You can have the rich Italian flavors, lower calories and carbs, your family raving about how delicious dinner is, and it's even easier to make than the traditional recipe. You can have it all with this lasagna stuffed spaghetti squash. Hey there, I'm Lena Brazil from Evolving Table, where we're all about making doable and delicious meals that are also pretty healthy for you. So if you're ready to get to cooking up this lasagna stuffed spaghetti squash, then come on in and let's get started. Preheat the oven to 425 degrees. I'm going to somewhat quickly go over how to cut, prepare, and then bake the spaghetti squash. But if you're a newbie and you'd like a little bit more detailed information, you can learn more at the video right up here. So first, just get a medium to large size spaghetti squash from your grocery store, and using a relatively sharp knife, you're gonna cut your spaghetti squash in half lengthwise. Using a metal spoon with a relatively sharp edge, scoop out and discard the seeds in the strands. Drizzle and rub in one tablespoon of olive oil in each half and sprinkle each with one fourth teaspoon of salt and one eighth teaspoon of black pepper. Place halves face side down on a large rimmed parchment paper lined baking sheet. Roast squash in preheated oven for 40 to 50 minutes or until the squash is tender and shreds easily with a fork. While that's baking in the oven, let's get that meat sauce going. What I love so, so much about this recipe is that there is no tedious layer making. Recently, I made two enormous lasagnas for my hubby and a few of his friends who had just completed a 40 mile, yes, I said 40 mile run through the Grand Teton National Park. Well, needless to say, I felt like I had run my own endurance race just around the kitchen because the lasagnas were so much work. So instead of all of those layers, we're just going to be plopping all of our filling ingredients into those spaghetti squash boats. So it's gonna save you a ton of time and a lot of effort. To make that meat sauce, you'll wanna first finely dice one red or one green bell pepper and one small sweet onion. Place a large skillet over medium heat and add two tablespoons of olive oil, the onion, and the bell pepper. Saute for three to four minutes or until the vegetables become tender. Add two cloves of crushed garlic and continue sauteing for one minute. Push vegetables to the side of the skillet and add one pound of a 93-7 ground turkey. A 90-10 may also be used and ground beef can be substituted. Cook turkey over medium heat for six to eight minutes or until it is completely cooked through. Using a potato masher, break up the turkey until the crumbles are a uniform size. Add a 24 ounce jar of spaghetti or marinara sauce. And just use whatever brand you happen to have on hand. Two teaspoons of Italian seasoning, one teaspoon of salt, and one fourth teaspoon of black pepper. Stir to combine. Reduce heat to low, cover the skillet with a lid, and simmer for five minutes. While that finishes up simmering, let's talk about the Italian seasoning. You can either use a store-bought kind or make your own at home. For a homemade Italian seasoning mix, combine one tablespoon of dried oregano, one tablespoon of dried basil, one tablespoon of dried parsley, two teaspoons of dried rosemary, two teaspoons of dried thyme, half a teaspoon of garlic powder, and half to one teaspoon of red pepper flakes. Store any leftovers in an airtight jar for up to one to two years. Our spaghetti squash is done cooking. The next thing you'll need to do is take a large fork and shred the inside of each half to form noodles. Divide the ground turkey sauce evenly between the two halves of the spaghetti squash. Add four ounces of ricotta cheese into each boat. Part skim or whole milk ricotta cheese may be used. And top each half with half a cup of shredded mozzarella cheese. Return the spaghetti squash boats to the oven and continue baking for an additional five to 10 minutes. You'll know they're done cooking when the cheese melts and begins to brown slightly. Serve these up with a sprinkle of additional Parmesan cheese and a bit of fresh basil or parsley. Oh yeah. Mmm. Mmm. Mmm-mm. Mmm-mm. 
Mm. This could totally be an entire meal on its own. Or you could serve it with a side of this lemon and garlic roasted asparagus. Thanks so much for hanging out, y'all. I'll see you again soon.